Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Thank you for joining us uh, wherever you are. I hope you're all safe and healthy, and I hope you're enjoying your weekends, if it's already the weekend in your country. So I know that a lot of talented people are following Education USA. For that reason, Education, Education USA Libya is hosting a special session today, specifically for the students who want to combine their love for passion and make a career out of it. If you are into music or sports and would like to learn more about sports and music education in the US, the application process, and the funding opportunities, join us today. I'm Emira, the Education USA Advisor for Libya, and I'm very happy to be joined by Melissa Deschamps, the Regional Educational Advising Coordinator for Education USA, and Seth Walker, the Associate Director for International Admiss Admissions from Indiana Universities. Hello. Hello, thank you for having us. Thank you, how are you doing? You're doing great, thanks. Great. So, uh, Melissa, would you would you like to introduce yourself and would you like to start introducing Education USA briefly? Sure. So, as Amira mentioned, my name is Melissa Deschamps and I have the privilege of working with 13 countries across the Middle East and North Africa region. And so I'm excited today to um, welcome you all as well. As you may or may not be familiar, Education USA is a global network of advising, um, which takes students, parents, counselors, whomever is looking for information about the US higher education system, um, how to approach it, how to look for options, we help clarify that process. We have over 430 international student advising centers across the globe, more than 550 advisors throughout those. And we are really the official source of information on US higher education. So if you have questions, if you're not sure where to start, Education USA is the place to begin with that. So I'm excited for today's topic. Um, I personally have an interest in sports and music, actually took a minor in music during my undergraduate studies. And so really am a proponent of making sure that if you enjoy something, you should be able to find a way to incorporate that into your, your life, your, your career, um, and really have a good balance of what you enjoy uh, with the things that you're doing on a daily basis. So I'm looking forward to um, hearing from Seth as well, so we can learn more about those programs, and we'll look forward to any questions you have. Over to you, Amira. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you for joining us today again. So for anyone who joined Education USA, Libya, or any other center, so of course you're going to ask your questions, how can we help you? So why are we here? So here are the main points that we help students with. Number one, we hold public information sessions and now due to the pandemic, we're doing them virtual. So you can follow us on Facebook or on Instagram if you'd like to be part of these sessions, if you'd like to learn more about the educational system and different programs in the US. And you as a student, you can suggest also some, top, so, some topics that you'd like to learn more about. Also number two, we do some chat sessions with university representatives and alumni. So just like our today's session, we host some of the US college representatives to talk about different programs or even some of the financial aid opportunities for international students, sometimes the application essay, some tips and tricks on writing, and so on and so forth. We have a lot of great topics for all of you. And sometimes you will find some sessions with alumni and that could be you one day, you never know. And also we offer different individual consultations with the students and their parents. So if you have already started applying for universities, if you need like private guidance from your advisor, you can um, email me, there you go, or you can find me on WhatsApp and we can have a um, Zoom call or WhatsApp call and I can help you with all of that too. Also, um, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram, so you only have to type Education USA Libya. And this is our official website for Education USA. So just type educationusa.state.gov. If you would like to explore more activities or events that, as, uh, that other centers hold, or if you'd like to learn more about our five steps or some of the financial aid opportunities for international students and so on and so forth. Uh, so again, I'm so happy today uh, to uh, host Ms. Mr. Seth with us. 
So uh, I'm going to start with a brief introduction about our guest. Mr. Seth Walker has been working at Office of International Services full time since January uh, 2012. He primarily assists students applying to Indiana University from East and Southeast Asia. Before starting this position, he earned a Master of Science in Higher Education and Student Affairs from the Indiana University School of Education. Growing up in Tokyo, Japan, and traveling around the world gave him an appreciation for culture exchange, and he is happy to facilitate the student exchange through education. Again, we're so happy to have you with us, Mr. Seth. And for anyone who's watching us, please prepare your questions and we'll bring them up at the end of the presentation. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Um, it's a total pleasure to be here. Uh, as I'm just gonna reinforce, Education USA is one of the organizations that Indiana University is always so honored and pleased to partner with. Um, the information you receive from Education USA is bar none, the most important, most accurate, so please use them. Um, we know that we do whenever we want some information on a region or information about a school, so please be like us and use them for all of your higher education needs. It's a wonderful organization. We're so honored to partner with them. Um, thanks again for having me. I have a lot of information to go through, so I'll do my best to keep it nice and tight, but if, um, if I go a little too quick, um, make sure I'll give you my information at the end and we can always stay in touch with that. Like I mentioned, um, my name is Seth Walker. I'm Associate Director of International Admissions at Indiana University. And what I'm hoping for for this session is to do two main things. One is I'd really like to kind of give you a context of where I'm coming from, what Indiana University is about, kind of where we're located, what the university uh, does. And then the second thing is to broaden your understanding of what study and opportunities in music and sports are from a perspective of Indiana University. So without further ado, to give you a little bit of idea of what IU is, we are a very, very large public research school. Um, large means we have about 46,000 students on our campus. Our freshman class, undergraduate, first year undergraduate class every year is about 8,000, but we're located in the town of Bloomington, Indiana. So we're a very, very large school in a very, very tiny town. About half of the town is the university. Um, that's a good thing in a lot of ways. We see it as it's kind of like a little summer camp for college students where you eat, breathe, sleep college for all of your four years. You enjoy the Midwest and all that it has to offer in like a quintessential little college town. One of the reasons why we're suited to present something like this is also because Indiana University is the home of the of Big Ten sports athletic teams. We have about over 20 different athletic teams on our IU campus, and it's about as big as you can get. We're the National Collegiate Athletic Association Division I, so the highest level of competition. So we really, really love the fact that we have this large school in a small town environment with that tradition and that spirit. But students don't come to Indiana University just to be in a small town and go to basketball or football games. They also come for academics, thank goodness. So we do offer quite a few academics, over 200 majors at the undergraduate level. Um, and we'll be talking about a few of those and how they all play with each other. Uh, I would say though, most of our students are from who are coming from outside of the state of Indiana are studying one of these four schools. Um, those are some of like the magnet marquee schools, whether it's global and international affairs, public and environmental science or affairs, or business and music are some of the most that we are most famous for. Um, but even though we're a big school, this is kind of the typical classroom that you'll have experience if, with at IU. So even though it's a large school, we still keep that kind of unique individual uh, connection with professors and your students as a paramount. So that's a little bit about IU, a little bit about what the environment is, where we're coming from. And now I would really love to tell you a little bit about what uh, the music opportunities are at a school like Indiana University. As I mentioned a second ago, our music school is the Jacob School of Music. This is a school that is very, very well known um, in music circles for 
students like who are going to Juilliard or Oberlin or Eastman School of Music, uh, or students who are studying classical music, a lot of performance, composing, ballet, they're very, very attracted to a place like IU. We put on nearly eight full-scale operas every year, three or four ballets every year. The stage in um, our opera or our uh, musical art center is one of the largest in the country. Um, students from Indiana University were the first students to perform at the Metropolitan Opera in New York when it opened its first its doors. So there's a lot of history when it comes to studying music at a place like IU. To give you a sense, this is that building I was just talking about, the, Met the Musical Arts Center. Um, but I think a lot of students who are interested in music and they kind of assume that, oh, I have to be the next Joshua Bell or I have to be the next Yo-Yo Ma if I'm going to go to a music school and study music at a university. And the reality is that's just not the case. The, most schools in the United States that have a music program, even if they're as well known as ours, have music that goes beyond classical performance. Um, it goes to areas, as you can see on the board, when it comes to audio engineering and sound production, if you like mixing, mastering, recording music. At a place like IU, students will practice recording bands, recording ensembles, a lot of folks will be able to record musical scores for cinema and film. So even in that audio engineering and sound production, that splinters into many different areas of study. Um, we mentioned ballet as well. There's also music education. If you're not looking to perform, but you want to become a teacher, having that music education is an option at a Jacobs School of Music. Um, there's also areas of study like folklore and, folklore and ethnomusicology, musicology studies where you study anthropology and sociology, but with a musical influence in it. Um, and even outside of the typical Baroque or classical music, you're seeing a lot of universities having jazz studies or having studies that are more contemporary music. So even if you're not thinking about playing Mozart and Bach, there's areas where you can kind of use your creativity and your love for music that goes beyond the classical performance. Another area that a lot of students, and you heard this from Melissa a second ago, where they have an interest in music, but they might realize that it's not their primary passion or it's not their primary objective at a university. Please remember that most schools and most programs will offer a minor in a lot of the courses they, they offer. Music at Indiana University is no exception. So students who decide to minor in music They'll have a core course in music for the listener. They'll still study music theory, but then you have access to ensembles and live performances like the picture on the right, which is our marching hundred, our marching band that plays before every football game on the field. Um, there's also music electives you could take as we'll get into a little bit later, but there is the option of expanding and continuing your music interest, even if that's not your major or even if that's not exactly what you want to earn, have a job in when you're done. So keep that in mind, don't give up the dream or don't give up the love of music. The US is very, very good about allowing you to hold both of those interests simultaneously. Another area that's unique to Indiana University is this music and general studies. This includes courses that may not be performance related, but we have courses like the history of rock and roll, what music and video games looks like, um, essentials of songwriting, music of the Beatles. We also have private lessons with over 20 different instruments and ensembles without audition requirements. So you can be a part of a musical experience even if you don't aren't looking to have that really competitive uh, ensemble audition requirement. So the opportunities are almost endless at any school and IU is no exception. And the areas that you can study may not be exactly what you classically think of. The last thing to mention about music and study that I'll bring up is this idea of interdisciplinary study. So in the US, we are very um, obsessed, I think is a safe word to use, for this idea of taking multiple subjects and smashing them together and creating new knowledge. Um, a great example of this is what we have on the 
in the PowerPoint right here, which is a Bachelor of Science in Informatics with a music cognate or a music photo or a focus. So this shows music as data and it explores what that world is like. So courses include MIDI and you know computer music. There's music theory that's involved, but areas that students find employment, it's accompaniment systems, optical score recognition, musical audio analysis, synthesis of musical expression from a score. So I'll give you a quick example. Um, some students who are in this department or in this subject, they decided to build a system so that if you were a performer, they built an, an algorithm that would allow uh, the performer to have their violin or their piano or their cello mic'd up. And as they played, the recorded uh, uh, orchestra that was playing behind them would alter to the way that the person was playing. So the algorithm would feel when you got faster and the entire orchestra would speed up with you, even though the orchestra was just inside of a laptop on a computer. So it's that type of area where music and technology, those are two very separate, it seems like disciplines, but they come together in a place like this informatics with a music cognate. We could go on forever. We don't have enough time to talk about all the areas that you could do interdisciplinary study. This is just one example. So keep that in mind about your different passions and how you can kind of put those together. Next, which we'll go through very quickly is this idea of sport. And at Indiana University, we have two schools that specialize in this interdisciplinary or sports and um, sports career, our School of Public Health and also our media school. So we'll look at those really quick, knowing that Indiana University is kind of a hub for sport. So the outlets for what students can do, um, whether it's media or whether it's working with athletes is almost endless because the scope of what we are do is so large. And that translates into a wide range of careers that our students are ultimately getting their uh, jobs at. As you can see, there's some career possibilities there's some notable employers here and there's majors. This is specifically within the School of Public Health that students will study. So you can see that there's career possibilities in sports agents where it's more of a business mindset. There's sales and marketing. There's hospitality service if you're being a part of the boxes in a sporting event. So the options are almost endless and it's not just being on the field or being an athlete itself. All of that event is surrounded by a whole network of folks who are working in different aspects. So to give you a few ideas of what that looks like, um, Indiana University has one of the oldest sports marketing and management programs in the United States. So you can see a little bit about what the major requirements are and then some other requirements. So students are learning about legal issues in sports, what kinesiology means and how the body moves, um, financial principles in sports, what it means to um, what it means to promote and have public relations and marketing. And you also do an internship. And so you can see kind of what those core requirements are for a degree in sports marketing and management. If you wanted to work for a professional sports organization or a, uh, a venue that hosts sports events like a tennis center or a football field or a basketball stadium. Another area of sport that's maybe not on the business side, but more on the athlete side is this idea of exercise science. So Indiana University and our um, School of Public Health also has an exercise science program. This is for a lot of students who are thinking about going into physical training, athletic training, or occupational therapy. And you can see what some of these specializations are, whether you're looking at the integrated exercise science track, you're looking for a pre-health profession, so you're becoming a doctor or a sports therapist, or you want to be an athletic trainer. And then you can see on the right that it feels a little bit more science, maybe, than some of the other degrees we're looking at with marketing and finance. This is much more you're learning about the human body and you're working with athletes, even if you're not an athlete yourself. The last thing we'll talk about before we go into a few questions is the school, the media school here at IU offers a sports media concentration. So these are students who are really, really interested in staying with journalism and sport. They may not be on the field, but they're the ones covering. So they're the ones who are writing articles in ESPN or are doing the interviews in the post-game session. And you can see that 
even with a school that has a specialization of sports media, we ask students to specialize even further in an interdisciplinary or tailored fashion. So you can see these specialization tracks could be sports journalism, if you're writing for a newspaper or an online website, there's video journalism, if you're making documentaries, um, there's multi-camera video production. These are for folks who want to be in the booth as the event is happening, doing the replay and slow-mo on live television. There's narrative filmmaking, which also goes to that documentary filmmaking. If you've watched any of the ESPN 30 for 30 documentaries or the slew of Netflix documentaries about sports, um, Icarus is another example of that. There's another one about game audio. So if you hear the squeaks on the court, if you're watching basketball or you hear the tennis ball crack, all of that has to do with game audio. Um, and radio uh, broadcasting and covering uh, covering a sport. There's also global media. So all those specialization tracks hopefully give you a sense that even within something as specific as sports media, you can even become more specialized in an area based on what your interests are. And on the right, we just kind of show what some of the course selections would be, that you have our general education, you study a core of a media school, and then you go through some concentrations um, and your specialization as well. Okay, I do wanted to finish up with showing you a little bit about what that sports media career might look like. So as you can see, we talked about a few of these already, but these are the areas where we're seeing a lot of our graduates end up uh, earning a or play, getting placed in a job, whether that's sideline reporting, videographer, you're writing for sports, you're the director of a communication of a sports team, social media specialists. Some students are doing uh, photography, journalism, and they're covering sports. The options are endless. If you even just imagine if you've ever been to a sporting event and you see all the people that work at that sporting event, this is kind of where any of this preparation can occur. It's not just the person on the field. Okay, that was a lot of information very, very quickly. The hope was that the, the goal of the presentation was to maybe not give you the exact path that you were looking for, but to broaden your perspective and broaden your horizons and realize that now after you've kind of been given this dump of information, that you can sit back and take a little bit of a look inside yourself and say, what is it that I love about music? Or what is it that I love about sport? And is there something else in my life that I also love that would be a good complement with music or sport? And that once you have those kind of three, four, five, six areas of interest that you have with sports or music and something else, bringing those together and developing some questions of how and going to a person like me or anyone else that you speak with at Education USA and saying, I love sports, but I also love film. How do I put those two together? Or I love sports, but I love marketing and business. How do I put those together? Or I love music, but I love computers. How can I make those two a reality in my future education? That's the hope of this presentation is that it gives you a vision and it shows you that those different paths and that interdisciplinary work is a possibility. And not only is it a possibility, but schools like Indiana University and many other in the United States have been built specifically to empower you to put those two interests together, those three interests together and make a unique degree that's uniquely yours and will serve you well as you go forward. So thank you very much. I know that was quick, um, but if there was any questions, I'd love to answer some of those. Thank you so much, um, Seth. That was a very good presentation. Um, and it, co it covers a lot of interesting majors and new programs that students can explore. So um, I'm going to start with the first question uh, that we received on our Facebook page. But again, this is a reminder for the students who are watching us. Um, so this, if you miss like any part of the presentation, you can rewatch it again on the Facebook. Uh, so the video is available there. And keep your questions coming. This is your opportunity now to get the answers for them. Now, I'm going to start with the first question from Zach, uh, a Libyan student. So he's, uh, he wants to get more information about, let's say, um, the, uh, the, the work on campus, so for international students. So if someone wants to be um, involved in you know, a music program or a sports program, what kind of jobs can he or she um, work in on campus? Thank you. 
That is a great question, Zach. Um, one of the beauties of universities in the United States and especially big schools in the United States is the options for work on campus are quite extensive. And so I'll give you a few examples, but know that that's, this is not the exhaustive list. So if you're really interested in music, any of the performances that are put on, um, let's take an opera as an example. There's folks who are doing ticketing, there's folks who are doing promotion and marketing, there's folks who are being ushers during the performance, there's folks who run the uh, subtitles for an Italian opera because it's gonna be in English. There's folks who are running all of the prop and set designs so that for just one opera, the number of people that are involved in that and in different aspects are limitless. If you take sports as another example, for our football games, 53,000 people come to our football games. For our basketball games, 17,922 when we're sold out, fill our football, our basketball stadium. Um, so when you think about that, there's a whole other realm of hospitality for alumni who are coming in and families and parents and VIPs. They broadcast usually live. Our last television contract was $50 million. So the television contract is extensive. So people who are doing broadcast, we recently started broadcasting all of our basketball games in Mandarin. So we have students who are doing live broadcasting in their native language and beaming that back to China. So of the events that we have, since they're such large scale, there's so many different job opportunities that you could have, and most of them are being paid. And one of the benefits of being an international student is any job that you have on campus, you're allowed with your student visa to work up to 20 hours per week on campus while you're in school. So a lot of students will take advantage of that and work at a basketball game, a baseball game, an opera, an ensemble, to be able to have that experience and still get paid while they're at school? It's a great question, Zach. I'll chime in with one question that I know we often um, get as well regarding, especially interest in music and even sport in terms of the preparation that they might need in advance. For music, sometimes there are questions about auditions, um, what kind of requirements of um, examples students might need to submit when they're seeking admission to a program like that. That is a great question. Um, for sports and sports marketing and media and kinesiology, there aren't very many of those prerequisites. I think sometimes um, if you're doing kinesiology, uh, ex uh, history of chemistry is helpful and biology is helpful, but not a requirement. That may be different for different schools, depending on how competitive their programs or how small they are. The other side of that is uh, music. And so if we look at Indiana University as an example, our Jacob School of Music, if you're studying music as a major, is very, very competitive. So Melissa, you're totally right that students do need to be prepared. They will have for most instruments, not all, but most instruments will have an audition and it's actually a two-step audition. So students have to submit a piece that they record. Um, and we usually tell you what you can record. It's usually like a some opera and then we say it needs to be in German or it needs to be in Italian and then you can need to record some contemporary thing and then one thing of your choice and so there is a pre-screening audition and then after that students will do a live audition whether that's over zoom or pre-recorded or sometimes when this pandemic is um, behind us it'll be it can be in person on campus and that's when students will sit for an audition and a place will be offered to them if they meet the uh, level of the school. Sometimes some instruments are more competitive than others, um, but a lot of times if you're doing a major at a very premier music school, the, the audition is, uh, caliber is much, much higher. So that's when you see a lot of students saying, maybe I won't be a major, but I'll be a minor and I'll still have access to a Jacob School of Music or in Eastman if you go to Rochester or uh, at the University of Michigan. So you'll have access to that, but you won't have to go through that rigorous audition process to do a major and to focus in music. So that's when students balance their decisions. Great, thank you. 
Perfect. Thank you. So I have another question from the same student, Zach. So he said, I, I know that this session is about uh, sports and music, but the student wants to know if uh, there are any other programs for students who are maybe interested in studying theater. And if yes, what kind of offers are there for international students? It's a great question. And I should have said that earlier, Zach. That's a really, really good point that for us, and this is not always the case, but for us, our music theater program or our theater drama and musical theater program doesn't live in our Jacob School of Music, it actually lives in our College of Arts and Sciences. So you're completely correct. It does exist on our campus um, and it's either musical theater, theater and drama. One suggestion I would have for you is to think about uh, if a school offers a, there's a difference between a Bachelor of Arts, a BA and a BFA or a Bachelor of Fine Arts. So if you're really looking to perform in theater or perform in musical theater, and you're looking for that uh, focus of uh, performance, a lot of students are asking folks like me or any other school that you're connecting with, if they offer a BFA, if you're looking for a bachelor's degree, if you're a master's degree student, they're looking for an MFA, which is a master's of fine arts. And usually that those type of programs are a little bit more specialized in performance, and specialized in uh, the getting students ready to be on Broadway or be in cinema or film. Um, and so look for those. The difference between a Bachelor of Arts, which is a little bit more of a generalist degree and a Bachelor of Fine Arts, which is a much more specific degree in theater, drama or musical theater. That's a great question. Thank you. Okay, so I usually receive this question too. So is it possible to, uh, is it possible for the students to double majors? Example, can they have a major in performance and music education at the same time? Yep, most students will, uh, are considering that. What the good news is, you don't have to decide that now. You'll be sitting with an academic advisor once you're admitted to any school. And as this is Indiana University is the case. In the music school, you sit down with an academic advisor and you can tell them your desires or your interests, and they would help guide you whether a double major makes the most sense or whether you want to major and minor, because sometimes a double major might take a little longer than you want. Um, it's possible students at IU can have up to three different majors, but if you wanted to do music performance, physics, and engineering, you might be here for a little longer than four years. So you have to work with your uh, academic advisor to see what the good balance is. And maybe you say, I wanna do music performance now and I'll get a master's degree in music education after I'm done. So there's folks who are on our campuses that help you through that process, but it's a really good, uh, it's really, really great for you to start thinking now about your different degrees or your different interests and how those will work together, whether it is a double major or whether it's an interdisciplinary field where you might have one major, but it brings in aspects of both uh, education and performance. Great, okay. And uh, I still have another question also uh, from Eamon. So, you know, like most of the international students, they care about scholarships and financial aid opportunities that the universities offer. And you talked about in the beginning of the presentation. So this student wants to get more insights about the uh, requirements to get a scholarship. That is a wonderful question. I think scholarships at big public schools like mine or any university in the United States, but I'll speak from like a public university uh, framework, they are usually broken down into a couple different categories. So any type of scholarship, one of the most common ones is a merit-based or a talent-based scholarship. And then there's another one that's a need-based scholarship. So need-based is what it sounds like. They're offering it to you based on how much uh, funding you need to attend that school. And then the other side is merit-based where most public schools, I can't speak for all of them, but most public schools are in that area where most of their scholarships, if not all of their scholarships will be merit or talent-based. So if you're a music student, what that means is regardless of what your bank account and your family's bank account has in it, if your grades are to a, a certain level, and if your audition materials are to a certain level, you'll be offered an award. For 
Indiana University, all of those awards, they don't come through my office. We wait until the music school can determine your talent or your merit. So academically, as well as musically. And then they're the ones who will offer the award and it'll be a quite a range, whether it's from a few thousand dollars all the way up to 30 or $40,000 a year based on the talent that you come to the university with. Um, Need-based awards are a little bit different uh, and Indiana University doesn't supply those and you don't see a lot of internet or a lot of big public schools supplying those. So merit-based aids are the biggest option. Perfect. Okay. And uh, one last question, um, Seth. So I know that music um, education and sports education is uh, based on talent. Now, when it comes to the application process, are students supposed to, um, I mean, do you choose students depending on their uh, writing skills when it comes to writing essays or personal statements or not really? Is it different? That's a great question. Um, for us, and I can't speak for all schools in the United States, I'll do my little spiel about if you want to have insight into how universities in the United States go through the application process, you just have to remember two words. It unlocks the mystery of all uh, application processes in the United States. And those two words are, it depends. So every school will do things a little bit differently. Um, some schools are threshold schools. They don't really care about what your essay says. They're like, I just wanna see your grades and a test score if you have one. That's all I care about. If you meet this, I promise I'll admit you. Indiana University is a little bit more holistic. So when a student applies, we, our primary review factor, or our like most important thing will be your grades because you're coming to school to be a student. So the first thing we'll look at are your grades and that will be kind of the first step and the most important central aspect to your application. And then yes, we do look at your letters of recommendation if you choose to submit them and your essay. When we look at your essay, we're looking for a few things, quality of writing, most definitely, but then we're also looking for a little bit more of an insight in who you are that doesn't fit on a transcript. Um, I can see what grades you had and what courses you took, but I don't really know who you are yet. Um, so the essay is a great place to talk about who you are and show a little bit of um, a personality that can't be shown in a transcript or grades. Um, and that goes the same with the letters of recommendation. Whether it is that you're really interested in sports marketing and management or sports media, and that can be injected into your uh, into your essay to give us a little picture of who you are and what your ultimate goals are. Um, so yeah, we use all of those factors of your application, but the academics are the things that are the primary source of decision. Wonderful. So I don't have any other questions. Um, Melissa, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I would just, um, I know uh, when it comes to internships, a lot of students that are studying particular fields have a clear idea of what research or internships might look like. Uh, can you talk a little bit maybe about what that might look like for students in either of these two programs? Yeah, most definitely. Um, Internships for, uh, I'll talk about performance for music first. Um, internships for performance usually revolve around uh, performance or going and uh, doing events at like ensembles or performing at churches or performing at festivals and doing things that are paid, but they are giving you uh, your resume a boost of like being able to play with groups and getting your name out in the field. So that's usually performance related. Um, the other aspect of if students are doing like audio engineering and sound production, or if they're doing music education, a lot of their internship or experience might be based in the work environment. So they might be doing teaching at a school to do some student teaching at a music program at a high school or a middle school. Um, students who are doing audio engineering and sound production might do like an apprenticeship style uh, event or an apprenticeship style internship at like uh, event space. It's live music, or they might be in a recording studio and doing an apprenticeship. For music, the good thing is each school at Indiana University within the university, so the Jacobs School of Music, School of Public Health, uh, the Media School, 
they each have their own office that's dedicated to exactly what you're saying, which is providing students with opportunities, whether that's performance opportunities, internship opportunities, apprenticeship opportunities. So they sit down with you, find what your goals are, work with your resume, work with your interview skills, and actually connect you with opportunities around the United States and other, where, other places. Um, on the sports side of things, some students will stay within the university grounds because our athletics are so massive. A lot of times students can feel and have that internship opportunity right in their backyard that gives them the tools they feel are necessary to earn a job outside in the business world or in the sports world. Um, and then some students during their internship time, which usually is between their third and fourth year, their second to last and last year of school, might work for the NBA up in Indianapolis for the Pacers or the NFL for the Colts. The organization that runs most of collegiate athletics, the NCAA, the National Collegiate Athletic Association, is 45 minutes up the road in Indianapolis. So many students work for them. We're on the cusp of having the basketball tournament in the state of Indiana, March Madness. So some students will work for that. So the, the options are quite endless, but the good thing is in most schools that are worth their weight or our quality schools will have a, a support office on campus that's specifically designed for your major. A lot of times they're called career development centers um, and those are entities or offices on campus that you should use as often as possible or as much as you feel comfortable to build your resume, understand what it means to apply, get in touch with alumni who are in the industries that you're looking to, uh, to work in. And they are great conduits and great avenues for you to find your internships. The good news too about your status as an international student, the good news is, is that an internship is a part of your F1 visa. So you don't have to get special work approval outside of your student status. We'll have to do some uh, reporting with the government on where you're working, but the good news is that's like baked in or that's built in to your, your student status, that you have that opportunity to have an internship and you'll have the opportunity to work as a student after you graduate. So that's one of the, one of the benefits. Great, thank you so much. I know we do get a lot of questions on that. And um, as students explore these different ideas of, of majors that they can pursue, I think that you know there's always this question even from the parent side of, well, what can they do with that? Or what kind mm -hmm. of experience are they gonna get? So this is really um, essential information that hopefully will help mm -hmm. them think about that a little bit more as an option. Yeah. And feel free, I would say, Google will be your best friend because a lot of these career development centers, they publish reports every year. So as family members, parents, students are wondering, I'm interested in this school or I'm interested in this university, but what do the outcomes actually look like? Most career development centers or career support offices or undergraduate career services office, most of those offices will publish reports that show where students are getting internships, what their salary internships are, all of that, and post-graduation employment. So use those um, publicly available reports. And if they're not publicly available, ask the Career Development Center to make them publicly available so you can get a sense of what your future will look like after the four years you're at college. Thank you. All right, so uh, thank you, Seth. Thank you, Melissa, for joining us today. That was a wonderful presentation. That was a wonderful session. Uh, thank you uh, for giving your time to the students too to answer the questions. Uh, for anyone who's just joined us, you have not missed anything. You will find our video on our Facebook page again. So if you have any other questions about uh, studying in the US, please reach out to me as your advisor or reach out to the advisor of your country. If you have any other questions, maybe specific, uh, uh, to the uh, sports or music education, feel free to reach out to Seth. Uh, I think uh, I think he's very happy, he's very pleased to answer all of your questions too. Uh, for our followers too, uh, you know that Education USA hosts different topics.
topics and uh, programs for international students. So if any one of you is interested in studying law or getting more information about the education of law, uh, join us next week. We have another session with the UC Davis University uh, where the US College Representative is going to give you an overview of the general LLM admission process in the United States. And you will also receive information about the LLM and summer programs at UC Davis, as well as um, a look at campus life. So again, prepare your questions and you're more than, we're more than happy to host all of you here. Thank you. Bye-bye.